I've got a couple of questions for you, Carl. Firstly, uh, the send-off, how did you see that? He's off the batter, just go for broke. Um, yeah. I don't think it's a red card, uh, but that's my opinion. Football is about contact. Football is about tackling, con you know, and things like that. So if, if that's a red card, people are going to get sent off every game, which is not what we want to see. It had a big effect in the game. Um, but from that moment, you know, I've got to give credit to my players because I thought the 10 men fought like they need to fight in a, in a, a game which really had nothing on it for us other than to try and get points on the board. But I think we've done ourselves a lot of good and proud today with 10 men especially. Yeah. And then the other question, Troisi and uh, obviously Scott McDonald changed the entire shape of the game. I thought the second half, the ability to hold the ball up and slow it down when you needed to. Why, why didn't you use it from the off? Well, Bernie and uh, Brucey were exceptional against Brisbane three days ago. Obviously, Bernie scored and, and Brucey's been in a good vein of form. So, you know, you get asked this question all the time as a manager that why don't you continue to play the players that are in form? Those two would played very, very well. Obviously, Jimmy and uh, Scotty come off the bench tonight and had a huge impact. They got different profiles to the other two players that started. Um, and based upon the dynamic of the game, due to the sending off. Obviously, it worked because we needed different types of profile in those players, but they certainly made a big difference. I just uh, March had a, a, a chance to win it for you. Yeah. It, it didn't happen. And you got actually in a, in a lot of good positions, even though you had 10 minutes, actually win the game. Yeah, listen, football football's pretty simple. It's about being organised and structured and, and from your frameworks that you defend, then you obviously try and find a way to attack, whether it's down the sides, through the middle, create overloads in whatever areas you want, depending on the system you play. We didn't change our shape. We went from a back five to a back four because we were down to 10 men. We kept our midfield three and our front two. And, and it worked because we did have guilt edge chances and... You know, Tommy hit the bar, I think, on a breakaway, a transition, which you'll get when you play against 11 because the 11 feel more under pressure to try and win the game rather than the 10. Uh, and Scotty Mack had a good chance and, and Muchy had a golden chance, which probably just sums it up our, our season. We defended really well, gave away two bad goals, scored two goals and had great chances to win, but unfortunately it wasn't going to be our night today. Thanks, Carl. You're welcome, Val. Carl, the pressure early. Adelaide obviously got a, got a goal early, but then you guys got your... Back into the game. What turned for you guys? Obviously, the goal against the Warren player was it coming just before that as well? The goal, uh, uh, yeah, no, they started very well, which I expected them to. You know, it's a it's a home game for them, which they need to win to try and cement their place in the playoffs. And full credit to them, they started very very well. Our keeper had to make two or three good saves, so that happened. We needed to weather that storm, uh, and then they scored the the goal, probably which they deserved, through an own goal. It was a poor clearance by us. Um, then we settled, settled down a little bit and got into our groove. We want to play a certain way, and we do play a certain way. And once we were able to string a couple of passes together and control the rhythm of the game, then, then we got our goal. Although that was a bit fortuitous as well with, a, I think it was an own goal or Bruce will try and claim it, but it was a good period of play. And then from then we kicked on again and um, got our second goal, which was good. And then obviously the, the dynamic of the game changed. Last game of the season for you guys, I satisfied with the performance, you know, the red card aside, satisfied with the performance, the fans are going to be happy with that. With the, you know, well, bri games. yeah, bri listen, brilliant fight from the 10 men. You know, whenever you go down to 10 men, it's, it's what you do, whether you, you know, keep your same shape, two blocks of four, which is a common thing, or, or you go 4-3-2. And we went 4-3-2 because we wanted to try and win the game. And even though there was nothing on it for us, other than getting points, we wanted to put on a good show. And I think we did that. Um, with our football, but also with our fight as well. So it's not the ending we wanted. We wanted to get make the top six. That was our aim at the start of the year. Um, obviously, we've fallen a couple of points short. We have to accept that. We have to analyse it. We will. I'll strip it down to the bare bones, trying to find what I need to do to move forward in relation to getting it right for next year. But we've got some foundations in place. We just need to build on them foundations and, and we'll come back stronger next year. Just on the red card we saw in the Adelaide Sydney game on the weekend, Elsie's first yellow card was quite a similar tackle, studs showing. Is that the most frustrating part about it is the lack of consistency? From Correct. The game to Correct. You can come and sit on my bench every week because that's all coaches want. Uh, we, you don't want coaches talking about referees, but they do every week. Uh, it's not just me because it happened to me today. It's, it's, it's every week. You know, I think Carl asked for a, a non-South Australian referee, so we got one and obviously I got punished today. But it's the same thing. 
listen, consistency is the word, and they don't like they don't like using that. They don't like the word consistency because it leaves it open. Well, coaches ask and crave consistency from their players, and if the players don't aren't consistent, they don't play. We just want that from referees and co uh, and linesmen and fourth officials as well. So, I agree with your statement there. That's not mine. You can get fined. <laughs> After that, you must be proud of. Uh... The reaction from the team to sort of hanging there. The next it's it. Listen, we we've shown at times this year we can fight. Probably not enough because we've fallen a little bit short. But when the chips are down and you find out about people, you don't find out about people when you're winning games of football week in week out and everything's rosy and everyone's singing your name and and writing good stuff about you in your newspaper. You find out about yourself when your back's against the wall and there's a little bit of feeling where you have to show what you're about. You know and. You can't, insti you can't instill it in players, this fight and this determination and desire. And I say to the players, I can't make you do it. But you'll realise when you step out of the game what it's about and why you need to have that in you, in your makeup. And especially these young Australians that want to go to, to Europe. It's a very, very hard world over there in Europe. And you have to understand that you have to have that in you, because if not, you get left behind. So obviously, foundations in place for young players here is really important. They're playing lots of game time, lots of talented youngsters here at the moment. But you know the simple fundamentals of come to work every day, learn, make yourself better, try harder, get fitter, get stronger, all these things, and then get some games. That's what it's about. And uh, Bruce Mount, another excellent performance, I thought, um, tonight. Um, he has been, I know, recent weeks linked away with a move um, overseas. Is he someone, though, that you want to keep around and definitely build around for next season? Yeah, listen, Bruce, he's been exceptional. First of all, he's, he's a brilliant person. I've got all the time in the world for good people because when you, when you meet good people and good players who, who are good people, you want them to do well and you, you have a special bond with them. I've got a special bond with Brucey. I think he's been phenomenal this year. He really has. I think he's been enjoyable to watch as a neutral as well. Getting the rewards with his goals, but he doesn't complain, comes to work every day, trains hard, gets, him, gets his head down. The thing this year, I think, is we've been able to manage his, his training loads because I think in the previous seasons he's been injured a lot and obviously putting him in a position where he's able to show his ability, a free roaming role at certain times in this number 10, and I think he's nearly hit double figures in goals. So I, I don't know what the future holds for Brucey. You know, we'd love to have him here at this football club next year, our football club next year, but you know, if he goes to Europe, I understand that as well because you know every player wants to go and play over there. Um, but it's not as easy as what people think. Obviously, tonight was the last game of the season, but have you started looking at some of the adjustments you want to make next year too? Yeah. Yes. Done that a while ago as well. So you have to be pre-planning in this game. Obviously, you can't take your eye off the ball, which we haven't, but you have to be ahead of the game. If you're not, you miss out. You have to put foundations in place. What we've done this year with the football club is we've played a lot of young players. And I know it's it's the narrative that people like using around the league at the moment. Yeah, Australian coaches or foreign coaches, and I'm the only foreign coach, I know that, that want to play these young Australian players. Well, I've done that. You know, players that have not even played in my MPL team have played over 20 games, three, two or three of them. Daniel Margus is a prime example. He's had seven games in his whole career. And he's played 26 games in the A-League this year. So sometimes that has hurt us because we've had four at the back six that are very, very young in their first season of professional football. But they'll be stronger for it next year. They'll be better for it, added with a couple of additions. We know that. So there's, uh, there's lots of work to do. Yes, planning is in place. Am I going to tell you who I'm signing? No. Uh, but it'll probably get leaked out because, unfortunately, everything gets leaked out these days. Carl, just obviously with tonight you said finals football yeah. wasn't in the picture for you and it was more about the, the points. Putting that to one side, midweek football, travelling, are you a fan? Do you think it's obviously this year's happened because of COVID and all the fixture rescheduling, yeah. but could it be something for the A-League in the future? Playing in midweek, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, uh, listen, I love more games. I think you need more games. You know, 26 games is great, um, but it's not enough. You know, you want to see players perform. You've got squads of, of players and you want these young boys to play. You need more games. You know, there's no reason why there can't be 30 plus games in a season. You know, and if it means playing everyone th three times and it's 33 odd games, then that's the way forward because you can't, you can't try and sell something that you want young players to play and have not enough games for them. You know, there's, there's a mixture between the A-League season and the MPL season. And if A-League players have got contracts and they're ending, then they don't continue to play in the MPL. It's not right. It's, you, you have, you've got to give these kids the best chance, all right? And you, you've got to look at the countries, I, I believe, 
that are successful at promoting young players, producing young players and giving game time to young players. So a simple thing for me would be to play more games, but I'm used to 46 games a season. You know, in MLS, it was 34 plus playoffs, it was 40 games. So 26 for me is not enough. It's not enough for the players. I think the players can do more. There's a long time. You, you have 12, 14 weeks pre-season. Teams in Europe after the Euros will have three weeks pre-season. So you can get yourself fit. You've just got to keep that, look after your body when you're, you're on holiday with the family. That's the important thing. But more games for me is the most important thing for the development of these young players. And I know the Wanderers fans are quite demanding um, as a fan base, but do you see this as, in your tenure, like a first stepping stone this season and then to build on next season and to just gradually get better? Yes. You know, it's it's not what I wanted. You know, the aim was to get into the finals football. We've not done it for the last three years, so that makes it four years. So with with being a part of a, a football club, any football club is pressure. You know, that's if, if you can't handle the pressure, you don't want to listen to what people say about you. Don't be a coach. You know, you have ups and downs at the, at, through through your journey as well. Uh, you stick to your processes, you stick to your belief, but you've got to have a plan as well. And I said from day one when I walked in, this would be my plan. I would put foundations in place. I would play young players. I'd make big, big decisions at this football club. And I think you've seen that throughout the season that certain players haven't played for a reason. Um, young players have continued to grow. So, But am I disappointed? Yes, I am. Because I thought we could have could have got there and should have got there this year. Dropped too many points, silly silly uh, positions, unfortunate decisions from outside things, but I can't control that. You know, Can we be better at set pieces defending? Yes, 100%. Conceded too many goals off set pieces, given six penalties away. We're most in the league, that's, that's a little bit unfair, but I don't give the penalties. So 